Welcome to the Council of Trend Podcast, a production of Catholic Answers. It is Friday here on the Council of Trend Podcast, which means it's time for Free for All Friday. Tuesdays and Thursdays, we talk theology, apologetics, how to explain and defend our Catholic faith. But Fridays, we talk about whatever I consider to be fun and interesting. And today, what I want to talk about are scaring kids into being safe. Think about your favorite. Do you remember PSAs back in the day, public service advertisements that were designed to scare you into the right behavior? Or even better, do you remember going to assemblies when you were a kid that were focused on particular themes like maybe drugs or dare or something like that? When I lived in California, so I lived, ironically enough, I live in San Diego now. I moved away when I was 10 years old. So I was born in San Diego. I lived here till I was about 10. Then I moved to Northern California and then finally to Phoenix, Arizona. And then ironically, now I'm back in San Diego, right where I started. And so when I was a kid, I remember one particular safety assembly we would always have every year. It was a train assembly because down here we have the coaster, we have Amtrak. A lot of schools and elementary schools are along trolley lines or train lines. And so we always had an assembly every year that would tell us about train safety, like don't play on train tracks and trains can come really fast. You're not expecting it. And there was one graphic that always stuck with me. It showed a train plowing into a car. And then it shows a car driving over a tin can or a soda can. And the point it was getting across was that a car, I don't think this is mathematically correct. Maybe it is, but no, I doubt it. I don't think it's correct. But the idea is that just as a car will crumple a soda can because a car is so much bigger than a soda can, a train will crumple a car. I don't think the ratio is the same, but the idea is the same, right? That if it's a train versus a car, the train is going to win. So be careful driving across railroad tracks. Don't play by the railroad tracks, et cetera, et cetera. So it just got me thinking about all of that safety stuff. What I want to do today is talk about the safety advertisements and other things like that, that I remember as a kid, and maybe you remember them as well, or ones that I have found on YouTube that are absolutely hilarious. Before I jump into them, though, I told Laura I was going to do an episode on this subject, and she said, I am here to scare you straight. (laughs) What is that a reference to? The Office, one of my favorite scenes in The Office, where Michael Scott is trying to get people to see that prison is not cool, because one of the new employees at The Office that was transferred from the Stanford branch actually had been to prison for some kind of a white-collar crime. And now he was out as part of the convict relocation program, was working in the office. And people thought, oh, wow, prison actually sounds good and is a lot better than working under Michael Scott at the Dunder Mifflin Paper Company in Scranton. So Michael has everyone go to a meeting and he's going to let them know, no, prison is something to be much more afraid of. There's somebody I'd like you to meet, somebody else who has been to prison, who can tell you what it is really like. So then he puts on a bandana and begins acting in the persona of Prison Mike, which, by the way, if you've seen the movie The Big Short, Steve Carell is also in The Big Short. It was a movie about the 2008 financial crisis and the mortgage and lending crisis. So Steve Carell plays a character in The Big Short. And I am telling you, the voice that he does in The Big Short is basically Prison Mike. So let me play the rest of the clip. I'm Prison Mike. You know why they call me Prison Mike? Been a lot of fun talk about prison today, but I am here to scare you straight. I am here to scare you straight! (laughs) I love it. I'm here to scare you straight. (laughs) All right, now let's jump into those safety demonstrations, commercials, what have you, programs that we had as a kid. Probably the most famous one. I remember going to this a lot as a kid in elementary school. In fact, I have more memories of learning from this in elementary school than I have of actually learning useful things in elementary school. And that was DARE. Were you a part of DARE? DARE was stood for, it was an acronym, it stood for Drug Abuse Resistance Education, DARE. According to this article, DARE is an education program that seeks to prevent use of controlled drugs, membership in gangs, and violent behavior. It was founded in Los Angeles in 1983 as a joint initiative of then LAPD Chief Daryl Gates and the Los Angeles Unified School District as a demand-side drug control strategy of the American War on Drugs. So if you're trying to keep drugs away from people, you can try to cut the supply, supply side, stop the drugs from coming into the country or people from making them. But then you could try to get people to not want to use drugs illegally drugs in the first place. 
that was dare you would go in they would come to your school police officers would come and they would show you these long powerpoint presentations or these really weird videos of you know about drugs and drugs are a bad thing people should not be using uh, illegal drugs that can harm themselves but i remember they just showed us the weirdest wackiest videos to make that point the one that stood out for me the most is they showed me a video about illegal drugs and one of them, it would show you each drug and what it did to somebody. And one of them was speed, I guess, or methamphetamines. And instead of showing you the horrible side effects that happen from using meth, like you imagine what a meth addict look, looks like, it just showed a video of a woman trying to make food in her... I've tried to find the clip. I can't find it. But I remember seeing this as bright as day. She was like trying to make food in her kitchen. And instead, she was doing everything sped up. I think they even sped up the video and she was like putting things away really quickly and running around fast and she would do things wrong like she would take the milk and put it in the oven instead of the refrigerator and it's like don't use speed kids why because i might accidentally not put the milk away into the fridge that'd be the least of my problems if i was on methamphetamines <laughs> so that's the problem with dare was that you would go to these things over and over and over again it took up all this time and they tried to scare you about drugs to not use them or not to join gangs. But then the studies show it didn't work. Studies have repeatedly shown that D.A.R.E. was ineffective or that its effectiveness could not be proven. D.A.R.E. America's operating revenue declined from $10 million in 2002 to $3.7 million in 2010 following the publication of reports that uniformly discredited the effect the effectiveness of the program. According to this article in Live Science, DARE was and is completely ineffective in preventing drug use. The numbers demonstrating this start all the way back in 1992, when a study conducted at Indiana University showed that graduates of the DARE program had higher rates of hallucinogenic drug use than those not exposed to the program. That was the other problem with DARE. Like, I didn't know what speed was. I didn't know what methamphetamines were until I was in the fourth grade and I sat through a D.A.R.E. program. I, I, I didn't even know what this was. So it actually introduced kids to drugs and uh, gangs and things like that. Every subsequent study on the effectiveness of D.A.R.E., including a major 10-year investigation by the American Psychological Association, found much the same result. The program doesn't work. In fact, it's counterproductive, leading to higher drug use among high school students who entered the program. So what does D.A.R.E. say? So D.A.R.E. lost his federal funding in 1998 because of this. And they asked the people who run D.A.R.E., what do you have to say to this? And one leader of the program said, I don't have any statistics for you. Our strongest numbers are the numbers that don't show up. That's highly convenient. The 1998 University of Maryland report presented to the U.S. National Institute of Justice stated, Officials of D.A.R.E. America are often quoted as saying, that strong public support for the program is a better indicator of its utility than scientific studies. So the idea here is, well, we know D.A.R.E. works because lots of parents like D.A.R.E. Well, of course, if you ask parents, even today, but especially back then, do you want your kids learning about drugs and not to use them from police officers in school? Yeah, I won't want that. You know, it's the best of intentions, right? But then when you actually study the program, it doesn't really work. In fact, the best way to keep kids off drugs, honestly, is to give them something to do. So give them something to do. Enroll them in an after-school program. And ideally, if you can get a teenager or a child involved in an activity that they have personal ownership in, not that they're forced to do it. If they're forced to, it's not going to work. But if they find value in it, whether it's athletics, whether it's drama, whether it's academic decathlon, any any other Academica alum out there? I, I was academic decathlon. I even... I turned down being captain of the team so I could help with our parish's confirmation retreat program. One of the biggest sacrifices I ever made in my life. But whatever it is, Akadeka, theater, uh, sports. I actually lettered in academic decathlon and theater. So I had letters to put on a varsity jacket, but I did not have the nerve to buy a varsity jacket and put letters on it that were not athletic in nature. If kids are involved in something that they have ownership in, then they derive self, self-worth from it, and they see that drugs are going to derail that important thing that they're focused on. So that's actually a really good way to keep kids from doing drugs. Not, in my mind, these... And if you're going to use an advertisement, go with the hard truth. I still remember the old anti-tobacco ads I saw maybe in junior high, so that would have been like late 90s, early 2000s, the ones that were really graphic. And those actually did scare me about tobacco. So if you're going to show consequences, show the real consequences. Don't mess around with kids. Don't joke around with kids. Just be real and sober with them. 
Because that's the only effect you're going to have is that kids feel like, look, if you're just being fake with me or trying to control me, they're not going to listen. But if you're treating me like a small adult, essentially, who's responsible for their actions, and I'm giving you all the information to make a good decision for your health and your future, that's different. But not some of these anti-drug announcements that are just supremely goofy. I've got two to share with you. One from back in the day, from in the 90s, and one that's even more recent that is still really goofy. The first one is, I kid you not, Pee Wee Herman. You remember Pee Wee Herman? Say the magic word! (laughs) Uh, Pee Wee Herman telling us not to do crack. This is crack. Rock cocaine. It isn't glamorous or cool or kid stuff. It's the most addictive kind of cocaine, and it can kill you. Look, everybody wants to be cool, but doing it with crack isn't just wrong. It could be dead wrong. Crack cocaine? That's the secret word! Did did you ever watch Pee-wee's Playhouse when you are growing up, Pee-wee's Playhouse? And here's another question. If you were an average viewer of Pee-wee's Playhouse, do you think you were already likely to use crack cocaine? I highly doubt it. So just watching this, you just, you can't take it seriously. Even if you watch the video online, when Pee Wee Herman is saying it, you're dead wrong. He's like holding his lips back, trying not to laugh, because I think even he sees like the absurdity that was involved in that. Still, Pee Wee's Great Adventure is is an awesome film. Here's the next one, though. This is uh, the hashtag stoner sloth video series. So the idea here is you have a a family or in a school, and what makes it stand out in the video is that somebody is dressed up to look like a giant tree sloth, okay? And they're acting really... They look like just a tree sloth with giant, huge nails, fingernails. And they're either trying to take a test or they're trying to pass the salad at dinner, and they're really slow about it and not responsive, and people are looking at them, look what marijuana did to this person, and you just burst out laughing because it's a, it's a giant sloth and they're just like kind of slow and tired. Well, I feel like that every day. I feel like they should make a PSA and someone goes by my office at Catholic Answers and there's just a giant sloth working at the computer. They're like, Trent, are you okay? It's like, what happened to you? Oh, my kids were up every three hours. Now I'm a giant sloth and I can't get anything done. Here, I'll, I'll play uh, one of the ads. And when you hear the, just imagine a giant sloth an anthropomorphic tree sloth. So like it's a human size and shape. It's like a giant sloth, basically. And this is supposed to be like a teenager, a teenage boy at dinner wearing his basketball jersey, dressed as a giant sloth, and he just doesn't have it together because he's using marijuana. Could you pass the salt, please, darling? Chasing the salt. I can't help it. (laughs) And the salad also looks really fake, by the way. The salad is just like five pieces of lettuce. It's not even a a salad. It's just the... Starting a sloth. And so that ends with, it has this text, you're worse on weed, hashtag stoner sloth. So when you watch an anti-drug advertisement and your first reaction is just to bust out laughing, then you know uh, it's probably not going to work. Uh, here's another one. This is an old one from the 90s. How to be bully smart. Uh, by the way, I also found some of these through a uh, comedy YouTube channel, Eddie Burbank. So, I mean, the comedy, when I reference comedy YouTube channels, by the way, odds are it's probably not clean in some parts. You may find some things morally offensive. I think that's important for me to make as a caveat. Obviously, everything I try to keep on my podcast is going to be uh, family-friendly, or if it's a mature subject, I'll let people know about that. But also, you know, St. Paul said we are in the world, but not of the world. So we're not of the world. So I'm aware of different things that are out there. I got to peruse the internet, find neat content for you all. So I think it's helpful to let you know where I've I found materials and let you know how offensive it is or if it's just even patently offensive or or what it might be. So I was watching Burbank's comedy YouTube channel and it's funny though, you know, he swears a little bit here and there. So I think that's important for you to for you to know and understand. But he references this how to be bully smart video, like the anti-bullying videos. And I still haven't really figured out a way to deal with 
bullying. I'm just glad that I'm not a kid anymore. But then again, you still deal with bullying. It's like, man, bullying really stinks for, you know, you think about it for like middle school and high school students. But if you're on social media, it feels like the bullying continues like nonstop, actually. That's why I'm not going to give my kids smartphones or anything like that. They can have a dumb phone and a GPS unit, uh, like a TomTom GPS unit. And that's it. I do not want them go on the, on the internet social media or anything like that. So I don't know what to deal with when it comes to when it comes to bullies. What I do know what doesn't work are these anti-bully commercials. So here's how to be bully smart. Being bullied isn't fun. That's why it's important for you, all of us, to become street smart. Avoid clothing that might make you look like you're part of a gang. Avoid areas where bullies are known to hang out. First, you have to watch the video. I'll include a link at trendhornpodcast.com, but it shows avoid colors that might say you're in a gang. And when I was growing up, they did this a lot. I was in Southern California. So we always had assemblies telling us not to wear things like gang colors. They would always tell us, don't wear gang colors. But then nobody told us what the gang colors were. So I'm like, well, wait a minute. What are the gang colors? As if like, you're going to tell us there's this hazard, gang colors, don't wear them. And then I go home and I think in my little Crayola mind, okay, there are eight colors out there. I'm going to wear my, I'm going to wear clothes tomorrow. Which one of these colors is the gang color? I've got like a, a one out of eight chance or even who knows more than out of eight. If there are multiple gangs and they have multiple colors, what do I wear? So in the video, there's like this kid who's just walking around in a uh he's not wearing gang attire he's wearing a red and green polo like what you'd wear at christmas and they say don't wear gang colors I'm like oh so just during christmas should i just wear blue and white you know i mean half my family's jewish at least i'm gonna be okay i'll just wear hanukkah colors rather than christmas colors oh my goodness so th- then the video goes on trying to give people uh what do you do when you're dealing with a bully And the advice is just to hold up your hand in front of you if a bully comes at you to try to attack you. Most bullies are going to be larger, stronger, and better fighters than you. Never be ashamed to run. We will teach you some stun techniques and dirty tricks. Be careful not to grab the hair loosely. It will make the hair pull less effective. We want you to each make a fist. But we don't want to teach you how to punch. Instead, we feel a slap is more effective. I can tell you that these self-defense techniques are probably going to get you even more injured. But I I don't know what to do when when it comes to these kinds of situations. I'll tell you, bullies are really smart. You know what was the worst thing that bullies used to do? Like you, if if you could defuse a bully and even uh, keep them from bullying you and get out of the situation, what they would do is they would go to a teacher or they would go to someone and then say you were bullying them. And then suddenly got you in trouble. Like they were master manipulators. There's a book I read a long time ago called The Sociopath Next Door. And it claimed that like one in every 25 people is a sociopath and has no conscience whatsoever. I'm willing to believe that's that's quite a possibility. So I don't have all the right answers when it comes to dealing with bullying or other things like that. I mean, I think we should pray for these individuals and really not give them any more ammunition than they want in these kinds of exchanges. Uh, St. Paul says that when you uh, are kind to someone, when you're kind to an enemy, it's like pouring hot coals on their head. They absolutely cannot stand that. So like when on online, for example, some people will say mean things to me. Shocker, right? And what I say to them is, uh, peace be with you and have a really blessed day. And I can see it kind of riles them up, but I don't give into that anymore. And I don't give them any of that kind of attention. All right, two more uh, uh, safety videos that are just absolutely bizarre. Uh, This comes from Get Street Smart, A Kid's Guide to Stranger Dangers. And so you've got to remember stranger danger, right? Don't get in a car with a stranger. Don't go with someone you don't know. And this is really important. I remember back in the day when I was a little kid, I think this was right around when Adam Walsh disappeared. So Adam Walsh was playing in an arcade somewhere with his friends, or he's at a department store, and the manager made him leave, and he got separated from his friends, and he ended up being abducted and murdered. And so his father, John Walsh, later went on to create America's Most Wanted, that television show. He became a child safety advocate. And so that happened around when I was young. And so the the big thing then was to teach people about stranger dangers. Stay away from strangers. Uh, They had the thing where... Uh, If someone pulls up in the car, they say to you, your mom's been hurt. I got to take you to the hospital. You're supposed to say to them, what's the secret code word? And that's actually good. That's something decent to have. But what was weird about all this stuff was that people would tell us, stranger danger, stay away from strangers. But nobody told us what the strangers were going to do. 
So you never quite grasp the seriousness of what would happen if a stranger tried to abduct you. And so the absolute worst example of this is the video Get Street Smart, A Kid's Guide to Stranger Dangers. And it's about, the video is about, I'm, I'm not making this up. It's about an alien named Corny. I think even the people who wrote this video hated it. Why else would they call the alien in it Corny, who tells Corny jokes, and it's a really Corny character. He's like this tall guy with this weird orange alien head. Reminds me of the Coneheads a little bit. Uh, but he's orange, and he says uh, Nanu Nanu, which is kind of a throwback to Mork and Mindy. So I'm kind of getting the age range of the people who wrote down the script for this video. And he's spo- so he's tall. He's like as tall as an adult, but he acts with the intelligence of maybe like a four-year-old child, even though his other classmates are probably like 10 years old. And so they're trying to tell him to watch out for stranger danger. The entire video is absolutely absurd. I'm not going to talk about it, the whole thing. <laughs> it involves elements of Groundhog Day, and it's just totally absurd. I'll leave a link to it. It's Get Street Smart, a Kid's Guide to Stranger Danger. But just to give you an idea of just how dense this kid is and how creepy it is when it talks about abduction, here's the beginning of the video when Corny the alien walks with his friends to school. And I think at the beginning of the video, there's a Star Wars-like text scrawl that says, Corny the alien came to Earth to teach people about stranger danger, except he knows nothing about stranger danger. He falls for all of the oldest tricks in the book. Here's the beginning of the video where Corny the alien walks with his other friends to school, and without his friends, he would have been abducted like 20 times. Want some candy, kid? Oh, no thanks. It rots my ears. Take a fly and leave, Buster. Put out your radar, Corny. Avoid unidentified beings. Your mom told us to take care of you. Good thing it saved you at school. Ah, uh, who needs it? A smile goes a mile, you know. Hi. Hey, where are you going? On your way to school? See? He likes me. Hello. Interesting boy. Uh, where do you come from? That yellow house over there. Nice. You never give out personal information to a stranger. Do you know that guy? No, but he has a friendly smile. Yeah, and now he knows your address too. And so it's weird because the strangers all look like normal late 1980s, early 90s suburbia individuals. But like they just like show up and like the highest concentration of like child predators are within this town. So like every few minutes, somebody is trying to abduct this kid. And then so this alien, I should say, who's dressed like a kid. But you can clearly tell that he is an alien. And so the rest of the the video is involving Corny. He has this device that allows him to reset the day that he's in. So he gets abducted over and over and over again because he doesn't understand stranger danger. And so part of the video is just a weird montage of this alien kid being abducted in different ways set to really upbeat music. So it's absolutely bizarre. Take a listen. Stop, think, listen to your heart. So the explosion is like when he uses this device to reset the day and teleport away from danger. But it's creepy because right there is like, stop, think, listen to your heart. Like he's walking down the street and someone grabs him by the throat and pulls him into an alley. Smiling friends cause you danger. Are you good, You're listening to the lyrics. Like, so this is where, like, a stranger in a park is playing frisbee with him. And, you know, it's a stranger. Oh, I'm playing frisbee. This is great. And then the stranger follows him into the bushes and tries to abduct him. And he and so Corny zaps away. But listen to the lyrics. Might be dressed as ice cream boys bringing candy and toys using stolen badges, like stolen police badges. Like the, the lyrics are like this totally paranoid. Everybody is out to get you. Be afraid of everyone you don't know. But it's all really upbeat and happy song played against the backdrop of a kid being abducted by adults over and over and over again. So it takes child abduction, which is a serious, horrible, awful thing. It's the same problem with the really funny drug videos. It takes a serious, awful thing, tries to connect to kids by being upbeat or funny. But in doing that, you have drained away the seriousness of it. So kids are just being entertained. They're not actually being moved to care about something that's really dangerous. It 
It makes no sense. It makes no sense. It makes no sense. And what doesn't make any sense, the last one is an early 1990s PSA uh, with blue Muppets that's terrifying called Don't You Put It In Your Mouth. You know, what? what's the message you want to tell kids? I, I guess this is for like... Well, I don't know. Like, what kid is going to really put things in his mouth that would understand this? Usually, I mean, I have little kids, and by the time they're three, they know not they're past the chokeable age. I mean, you think about it on things with small parts, it always says keep away from kids under three. So I guess maybe the target audience here is ages two and three that they could understand the lyrics. But I mean, it has to go above like four or five or six. But it's not about choking. I think it's about like poison. Like, don't eat things you, you don't know. So it's either anti choking or anti-poisoning, I'm not sure, but these weird, terrifying blue Muppets show up, and they sing this song. Why do you think your mommy or daddy are always telling you, don't put that in your mouth? Let's find out. Don't you put it in your mouth. Don't you put it in your mouth. Don't you stop it in your face. Don't stop it in your face. Though it might look good to eat. Though it might look good to eat. And it might look good to taste. And it might look good to taste. You could get sick. Yuck! Real quick, ick, real sick, real ick, don't you put it in your mouth. I will give this PSA one bit of credit. The song is kind of catchy, and I do apologize if I've infected you with an earworm, and now you're going to go away from today's Council of Trent episode. Don't you put it in your mouth, don't you put it in your mouth. Who knows? Maybe it will save your life one day. I have no idea. Uh, but I will say, so that's one thing. But if you watch the video, and I'll include a link at trendhornpodcast.com to this and the other videos to watch for your enjoyment. The Muppets are, I don't know what they are. They're just big. They look like big blue things. Uh, <laughs> I look like old like baseball mascots are on their last leg. Uh, definitely not Jim Henson quality Muppets here. They look like the Muppet, the puppets you would see at one of the discount Chuck E. Cheese's. Not a Chuck E. Cheese, but at like the pseudo Chuck E. Cheese. It had audio animatronics that barely worked. I remember going to one in Phoenix once. It was not a Chuck E. Cheese. It was a fake Chuck E. Cheese. And it had audio animatronic eyes that were basically moving trash cans, trash cans with eyes that were moving. So they're horrifying. The scene is barely lit very well, but I will say the song is catchy in that regard. So I'm here to scare you straight. I <laughs> hope you enjoyed talking about scared straight, stranger danger, dare, drug safety. Uh, uh, today's mission was not to scare you straight. It was just to have a good laugh and a reminisce. Though I will say, though, the one big point to bring out, if you want to keep your kids away from drugs, for example, just be honest with them about it. Don't hype up things. Be honest. Be sober about it. You know, No pun intended. Be honest and sober and talking about the dangers of drugs. And then encourage kids to take control and agency over their life and to say that they are the author of their own lives and God has given them graces to do wonderful things in this world. And if they use drugs in their life they use illicit drugs they give up that agency and they're not going to be able to do the things that god wants them to do and the things that are ultimately going to make them happy they're going to trade the great things they could have later in life for the mediocre or even super harmful things they would get right now instead so as mr t would say drink your school stay in drugs and don't do milk wait that's not right (laughs) whatever it is have a blessed day everybody If you like today's episode, become a premium subscriber at our Patreon page and get access to member-only content. For more information, visit trendhornpodcast.com.